Hello and welcome. You are in the very beginning of your 30th day of 30 days of the Sunrise Yoga series, Unleashing the Magic of Yoga. I sincerely hope that as you find yourself sitting here for this 30th time consistently in a row, well, consistently according to what consistency means to you, that the power of upsetting your day on a consistent basis is felt and that you find yourself in a different place with whatever commitment or devotion you made when you began this journey. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we are going to honor that most powerful of forces, love. We're going to look at a few heart opening poses and I'm going to leave you with the um, last little bit of yoga that we may have been missing, which is fun. In the end, everything that you do should have this glow of fun around it, even if it's difficult fun. Um, like when people do, I love spin. I love spin. Um, I'm a vata pitta, so of course I would love spin. That's my dosha. If you ever were into Ayurveda, I'm a vata pitta. Obviously, look at me. And um, spin, I love spin. And it's a love that for something that's very difficult, but it's really lovely. Some people find yoga very difficult. It's also really lovely and it's worth showing up for. And I hope that this sampler platter of yoga that you've experienced, these little snacks over the last 30 days has made yoga, have made yoga something that you can see the lining of fun around. Today also happens to be Wednesday. If you were taking it chronologically in the live uh, with me live each day and Wednesday is the this is the last day of the introductions to days that I've been offering so that you might leverage the power that is baked into each day we started with Thursday last week and we're ending with Wednesday Wednesday is Odin's day these are the English days so um these days are very different in other languages they do not mean Odin's day Odin's day, Wednesday, is the day. Odin is the Norse god of completion, of poetry, of willingness to see the future, but he's blind in one eye. So when you are looking in the future, you're always missing something. So it reminds you, you can see, you can have an eye towards the future, but what you've really got the full view of is right now. I love that he is um, dedicated to completion because it also is the day that we're completing. So it's quite um, serendipitous. Today, as you acknowledge that it's Odin's day, then yeah, you get those things done that need to get done for Thor's day, for that day of action. We've got to prepare before we take action most of the time. And Odin's Day, Wednesday, reminds us of that. So let's get ready to open our hearts by closing our eyes, pinning our shoulders down towards the heart, letting an erect spine sit on top of a root chakra that is connected to the earth. Breathing in through the nose, inhale. Exhale. Inhale through the nose again. Inhale. Exhale through the nose this time. And one more inhale. And exhale through the nose. Our first day. We talked about bringing the breath to that lower spine, to that lower back, down the spine. Bring the breath down to that lower back point. Inhale. 
Exhale. It's such a different feeling. It's like it washes, it's like an energy washed over me as I brought it down to the core. Do not forget, or rather, please remember that breathing in our core gives us access to 75% more oxygen than breathing in our lungs. Our lungs are absolutely the device we need to use to breathe, the instruments we need for it. But this is the emergency zone. Our lungs are the emergency zone. Our lower back is where we should always be breathing. And that's going to be more efficient, uses less resources, and we receive more oxygen, which means more oxygen gets distributed and our body benefits overall from those breaths in the belly. It is not just for fun. It's actually because it makes our lives better. <laughs> so one more breath to the belly, make it count. Inhale. Exhale. Let the eyes float open and let's get into our fountain of youth the five Tibetan rituals. Okay. Feet pinning into the ground, slight bend in the knees, making sure that we're sitting on top of our legs rather than um, uh, tipping under with our pelvis or pushing back with our pelvis. Just sit on top. Find that neutral place. If you are naturally sway back, counteract it with a slight tip under, but that's just for you. Pin the shoulders towards the heart. Shoulders root into the cuffs in order to allow the arms to elongate out. Uh, chin is parallel with the ground. Gaze is on the ground. Here we go. Inhale. That's one. Inhale. Exhale, it's two, inhale, exhale, it's three, inhale, exhale, that's four, inhale, exhale, that's five. Bring it all together, let the spin catch you. And moving to camel. Tops of feet, pin pushing in towards the ground. Our body is standing straight on our knees. We might, you see I have a, I naturally go like this. So I do a little tip under. I have my palms of my hands on my bum, fingertips pointing towards the ground, shoulders pinned towards my heart, elbows reaching towards each other, eyes of the elbows facing the short front side of the mat. Here we go, inhale. <sighs> Exhale, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five. Always working at your pace. We are warming up. That means that you may not do each one all the way perfectly, and that's expected. Okay. J. Inhale. I mean, start with your head up and inhale. Exhale. One. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. Tabletop. Arms a little bit wider than the hips using that protective grip. That's going to be able to bear weight and protect your wrists at the same time. Eyes of the elbows facing the front side of the mat. 
feet slightly less than hip width apart. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. And our upward facing dog, protective grip, weight bearing grip. Here we go. I'll do the full version, but remember you can do light, medium, or full. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Rolling through like a wave. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. That's four. Inhale. Exhale. That's five. Wonderful. Let's go right into our sequence. Bringing the feet a little closer. Maybe the heels come to the ground. Remember, there's always that spiral moving through from the floor to over your head, over the above the crown chakra. Think of that spiral. So when you're bringing your heels down, you're thinking less about the heels um, pressing on the ground and more about them rotating towards the ground, pressing in that very intentional way. Just catching the breath here for a moment and letting that heat build. Inhale, let's bring that right foot, that right foot to the sky. Exhale through and bring the knee down towards the center, placing that right foot between the two hands. Hands on the hips, let's go to Anjane Asana. Inhale, chest is up. Mm. That back leg can be bent or you can straighten it. That heel is gonna feel like it's pressing up against a wall. So it's not pressing forward, it's pressing back and up against a wall. That's easier to feel with the back leg bent, but when you have the balance, thinking of your hips square, you can press forward. Now from Anjane Asana, we're gonna take a pose called Warrior Four. So in Warrior Four, what you're going to do is you're gonna corkscrew that back foot down, just like you do for Warrior One. I brought my width, my, the gap between my feet, I brought it a little bit closer together. And now with that back foot on that diagonal so that the front toe is facing, this is my right leg in front, my left front toe is facing the left long side of the mat on that diagonal. We're going to simply take our two arms up overhead and then we're going to bring them, let them open and come back together, that same grip. So look at the grip over my head. It's got, my palms are touching each other. <laughs> And I don't want to lose the integrity of my warrior one. So let's make sure that we've got a lot of weight bending into both feet. And I'm going to now let the two hands open up overhead. And I'm going to have them grip behind my back. Shoulders pinned down. Warrior four is simply letting your heart guide the bend forward over your, in, into the pocket created by your front leg, by your right leg. So I'm going to reach up, reach back first, because it's a little back bend before we start, putting my heart first for this moment, and I'm going to reach forward. And my hands don't come up. They stay as if they were anchored towards my lower back. And only after I've completely, um, after I've got my shoulder 
touching my right knee, might I consider letting the hands come up and over? But I don't have to do that. We can stay right here. Remember, I have arrived. I'm home. Do you have that bind between your fingers? Because there are processes that are taking place just from that grip happening in this way. There are processes in your body that are taking place, interactions, transfers, exchanges. Don't miss out on that to get this pose. And eventually the shoulder will touch and you can bring, let those hands float over the head if you wish. This pose can be taken to so many levels. We're only taking it this far today. And let put energy back towards those that grip and let the grip guide you up. Pressing the body up, head comes up, flat back, and now you're back to the warrior one legs and you have that back grip. Make note of which hands, which thumb is on top because we're going to do the opposite grip when we switch sides. So don't forget, okay, my left thumb's on top, next time my right thumb will be on top or vice versa. Letting the hands go, we're now going to put our hands on the hips, rotate back to Anjane Asana and press off of that foot to come to one leg. You can press back and pop up to one leg, bringing the knee forward, or you can come from the back and press, 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 and bring that knee forward. And here, we're going to take bow. Uh, no, we're going to take dancer's pose because bow is a little bit, let's keep that with Bikram. It's, you need a lot of heat for bow. So you don't have to have heat, but it's helpful. So for bow, we start with our knee forward and we're just going to bring it back and down. We're going to let the knee, so this is my left knee. My left knee is going to point, you can't see. I'm going to do it this way. My left knee is going to point towards the ground and I'm gonna grab my left knee with my left hand. This is your commitment to the pose. The commitment is enough. I have arrived. I am home. So from here, you are going to let the back foot rise. So the back foot's moving. The back foot is moving towards the back. And as the back moves back, the front moves front. Now the arms. You can start with the arm up and you can use let that guide you, but you can have the arm wherever you feel balanced. I think it's easier to start up. So pinning the shoulder towards the heart, this is your beginning and you're just going to hold the left hand with the left, pull the left foot with the left hand. You can also, as you go lower on the leg, as you wanna grab higher, you can hold lower you can hold all the way to the shin to get a better grip. Depends on where you are with the pose. So heart first, we're going to kick up and back, kick up and back, kick up and back. And this is dancer's pose. And we're going to take the Jai Mudra on dancer's pose. Celebrating, letting our heart shine. And where is it shining? Towards the ground, honoring Mother Earth. From here, bring the, bring everything back together and bring the body to Tadasana. Let's take this on the other side. To get to the ground, we're just going to walk ourselves to downward facing dog. Letting our spine settle back into a comfortable place, a neutral place. Downward facing dog is incredibly nutritious. It's such a safe pose, especially when you think of the elbows of the eyes turning towards the, trying to see <laughs> the eyes of the elbows, trying to see the short front side of the mat. Yes, okay. From here, let's bring the left foot to the sky. And this time, 
Last time we had our right foot forward. Let's bring our left foot forward. Through the, bring the knee through the center of the body. Place the foot between two hands. And let's rise up for Anjane Asana. Hands on our hips. Body is squared to the front of the mat. We might start with a back leg bend. We might start with a back leg straight. From here, we're going to corkscrew. So you can take an inhale for this corkscrew. Corkscrew that back right leg to prepare ourselves for warrior one legs. We're going into warrior four. We're going to bring two hands together, noting which thumb was on top before. My left thumb was on top before, so this time my right thumb is going to be on top. And I'm going to inhale, looking first, um, forgot. First, I'll take the hands up overhead, and that is to remember this, okay? This, this. Look, the palms are touching each other. That is so important. People all wanna do this pose. They wanna do it like this when they bend over. That's so bad for your shoulder cuffs. It really wears them out. You need that protection, okay? So now, doing, bringing your hands over your head to establish that grip and to remind yourself, yes, the palms are supposed to be together. And we're going to take that same grip down. We're going to look up at the sky with our eyes first and then our hearts. <gasps> Inhale and exhale forward, bringing the back down, the head down, the shoulders down towards the ground. Your left shoulder and your left knee might kiss. You're still thinking of that squareness in the thighs. When you get to the place where they kiss, if you get there, you can then think about letting that grip, those united hands come up and over for a protected stretch mm, for your upper shoulders. We can't have this if we don't have a strong foundation in our feet. If we're not thinking of pushing against the earth, let the harder we push against the earth, the more the earth supports us. Pushing through those feet against the earth. Inhale, bringing the head up and using the hands initially to guide that movement up, that press back up to an erect spine. And let's bring the undo the hands, putting the hands on the hips. Let's pop up or tap, tap up to get ready for dancer's pose. I'm going to show you on this side, but you stay facing that side of the mat. And now we're going to simply bring the knee so that it points perfectly towards the ground. Thinking about the fact that our base is our left foot and all it needs to do is be enough because we don't need more. We don't need more than this base. It's gonna be fine. If we trust that that's enough space, then we're gonna be fine. Grab your right ankle or foot with your right hand. Hips are square to the short front side of the mat. We are standing on our left supporting leg and we're kicking up with our right. The hand, the left hand is above our head. Jai Mudra, that is thumb and pointer finger touching. And let's let the heart lead the way. So the heart is pointing up and out initially. And as the leg comes up, the leg kicks back, kicks back. And we might have a little bend. Hmm. Dancer's pose. Thinking about those square hips. It's really helpful for this pose. It protects your hips. Breathing through the heart. Letting the heart shine, but just through, the breath is moving through. It's swirling at the bottom of your spine and coming back up, but the spine is the, the base of the spine is where the breath is wanting to go as you're in this pose. But just acknowledging that moment when the breath 
passes the heart chakra. Okay, bring everything back gracefully. Arm is going to come towards the ground. Leg is going to come towards the ground. A controlled unpacking of a pose is as essential as a controlled building of a pose. Bring the hands to either side of the body, to dasana. And now we'll finish with one of the poses that I find to be so much fun, and it is side bow. So we're going to start with our body. We're going to put our left hand on the ground and our left hip on the ground. We're going to just recline so that our left shoulder is on the ground. The same way you grab your hands in bow, your feet with your hands in bow, is how you're going to grab your feet with your hands in side bow. So, I mean, in dancer's pose, we just did dancer's pose. The same way you did that is how you're going to grab them in spin side bow. So, you're going to put your left shoulder on the ground, let your left ear rest onto the ground, and just grab your feet. Grab your ankles with your hands. Tops of the feet or ankles with your hands. Okay, now, this is pretty much the pose. I've arrived, I'm home. My shoulder, left shoulder is on the ground, my left hip is on the ground, and I'm reaching back. To take it a little farther, you can, again, let the heart be the, be the motivator here. The heart shines forward and you let, you just have a little accentuation, a little arch through your heart, keeping your grip on your ankles or tops of the feet. And let's take a few breaths here. Feeling what it feels like to have so many points of contact with the earth while the heart shines. And let's take the other side. Bringing, taking, letting your hands release your feet. Bring your body to fetal pose as you would at the end of class after Shavasana on your left side. And we're just gonna switch it up to the right. So we're going to push up with our right hand and we're going to shift our weight so that it's now resting our right hip is resting on the ground and our right side body is resting on the ground. First right arm, then right shoulder, right arm goes back and under because it's gonna grab from under. And you can make like a board with this front side body, okay? Right ear or head, right side of the head is on the ground and grab your feet, grab your feet, your ankles, your feet both of them, just like you would in bow, like the regular bow pose that we do, or the way that you just grab them in dancer, and you are in bow pose, side bow. I've arrived, I'm home. From here, you can feel a slight accentuation through the heart, holding on to those feet. Seeing and feeling the world. with so many points of contact with the ground, with the heart shining. Hmm. One more breath here, inhale. Exhale. Remember that, biologically speaking, or chemist chemically speaking rather. Let's unleash, release the pose and let's get ready for Shavasana. Bringing the feet to flat and then walking them down for Shavasana. Hmm. Remember that chemically speaking, air is a fluid. When you are hurting, sometimes, especially if you feel like your heart is hurt. You can bring the heart to the ground in a pose like puppy pose, like we did yesterday, or in a very private and safe space, 
You can do a pose like side bow, which lets the heart be nurtured by the air, be enveloped by the air. It's not as aggressive a pose as camel, but you still got it. Getting that extra attention, pushing out for just a few breaths. There are so many passive ways to take care of ourselves. The subtle ways that we care for ourselves, the incremental, consistent ways. That's what leads us to the revolution. The revolution of love within. It's officially the 30 minute mark. If you have a time constraint, you're welcome to leave now. We're going to stay here for just one more minute. Letting the work that we did in today's yoga snack ground in our bodies. Okay. Wiggle the toes, the fingers, the hands, the ankles, the legs, the arms. Turn the body to the right side. Bring everything to the right side. Mm, into action. Pushing against the ground with the left hand. We come up to seated, easy pose. Hmm. And we acknowledge. We acknowledge what we did today. Grounding our work by putting the palms of our hands on our knees. Pinning the shoulders towards the spine. I'll do one om because it's the last one. And I just want this one. <laughs> Let's all do an om together. We'll take one, we'll take three rounds, three rounds, okay. Inhale. Exhale out on the breath through the mouth. Inhale. Exhale, om. Oh. Letting the eyes float open, bringing the hands to the heart and acknowledging the hero you were to yourself. You showed up for 30 days. You showed up and you met yoga, especially if this is your first time. There's a primer that's attached to this program. It's on Kindle and I believe it's available for free. And it expands on the work we've done over these 30 days. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for trusting me with your journey. I wish you joy, ease, space, and grace.
on this Odin's day, this Wednesday of completion, our process is complete. Satnam, namaste.